Alrighty, ya yeah, hello one and all, and welcome to Logiard Grimoire, or Logiard Grimoire. I haven't exactly figured out uh, what the pronunciation for this one is, but welcome to a new Let's Play! And for once, I'm not actually reading something. I kind of looked back at a lot of my older Let's Plays, and I kind of looked saw like Elmia and Custom Robo and stuff like that. And while I do enjoy the videos where I can read stuff and people can use it as background noise, I wanted to try and branch out a little bit and try a puzzle game again. Oh, and stuff like Pinobi as well. Um, so while this isn't a platformer, this is purely a puzzle game, um, I figured it'd be fun to try something different for this one around. Uh, this is a game that just recently came out on Steam, and it's made by the Jupiter Development Team, who I believe did some of the Picross games on 3DS, uh, which I have some experience with of those, but essentially this whole game is a giant puzzle game filled with nonograms, pictograms, number puzzle games, whatever you want to call them, uh, and stuff like that. And so, without further ado, let's get into it because this game looks super cool and super fun, and we're gonna get right into it. This game is also quite on the long side too, I will say. Um, it seems like there's like 30 hours of content or something like that here, so we're kind of in this for the long haul. Um, at least so far there's 280 puzzles, but I believe I saw that there, there's up to 400 puzzles, I believe, in the reviews and stuff like that, so... Let's see what this thing has to offer. Here's the main puzzle list for a Logiart, the Grimoire. Originally, it could solve various puzzles, but the yeah. magic cast in the Grimoire has gone strange, and now there are only two puzzles that can be solved, found in this beginning page. Yeah. For now, let's solve these two puzzles. So they're probably going to give us a hint for how to play these uh, number games to start with, um, but I'll try and also provide some extra flourish on the hint as well. So this game also has this thing called Fusion, which I believe, depending on how many puzzles you beat and stuff like that, you can fuse whatever you get from them into new puzzles as well, which is pretty cool. So this is a core puzzle according to the Fusion hint, and the puzzle hint says that possessed into rods, handles, and other forms, it is used as material for building and tools. Its flexible nature allows easy processing and burns well. Some of these grow uh, to be very tall and sizable. Uh, so we're gonna do one of you the tutorial. For funsies, I'll say yes, just in case anyone really hasn't seen these number puzzle games before and stuff like that, just so we're all on the same page, but I do have a, quite a good amount of experience playing these uh, puzzle games. So let's go with the mouse, that's what I'll be using for this. So let's look at some Logiard basics. You'll be using this puzzle as an example. In Logiart, you must, you must use the hints displayed on the top and left side of the puzzle to fill in the squares. These hints show the number of connected squares for that row or column. So, two squares here are connected to the four squares in this row. When there are multiple numbers like 3 and 1, there will always be a gap between the squares represented by each number. To reveal the hidden picture, use the hints to fill in the correct squares. And once all the core correct squares are filled in, the puzzle is solved and the hidden picture will, will, will appear. Let's start here. As this is a 5x5 puzzle, this hint means the whole column should be filled in. Have a go. So we can just throw that in nice and easy. Next, let's take a look at this row. This 3-1 has three connected squares and one isolated square. There's at least one empty square between them, so try filling in this line. That's correct! We don't need to fill in this leftover square. Always put an X on the squares you're certain about not filling in. I believe I can just right-click that. Yep, perfect. Good! Next, let's look at this row. Since there's already a square filled in, there's there are only two ways this line can be finished. We don't know which way is correct, but we do know the corner squares are empty, so let's place an X on the corner squares. Well done. I don't know if that was exactly the best representation of what that would, uh, what that meant to explain, but essentially because each hint or grouping, as I like to call them, means that, like for example, there's two squares in this exact row that are going to be connected. So we know that since there's one in the middle column here, 
Uh, the only other place the square could be is either on the left side here or the right side here. That's why the game was like, oh, well, you can just eliminate these as a result. Since we know the X goes here, you can find the correct square for this column. You can fill it in. Yep, and we know that because this is a 2, the only other place this connection can go is right here. Correct! All the squares for this column are filled in. Remember to put an X on the empty squares. Oh, I have to manually put these in? Huh, interesting. Well done! Next, let's look at this column. There's one open square at the top, but our hidden number is 2, so we know that won't fit there. As always, put an X on squares that don't need to be filled in. That's it! So the correct squares for the hint 2 are hidden in the bottom 3 squares. Since the hint is for 2, there are only 2 ways to fill in these squares. Oh, I love this visual. This is, this is a very good visual of where you can kind of start to understand where could the 2 squares actually go. Do you see it? The middle square is used for both, so let's fill it in. Yeah, so we, we know for a fact that at least this one is overlapping on both possibilities, so we know it's here. Well done! This trick will come in handy on many puzzles. Have a look at these examples. If you think about it carefully, it is always possible to find the correct pattern. Try out all patterns and to find the correct squares, even on lines with lots of hint numbers. And there's a couple of different tricks that you can kind of figure out for this one too. So with this being a 10 row, a 3-4, um, that one gets a little bit tricky because it's not evidently clear where the 3 can go and stuff like that, or where the 4 can go. But you can start to kind of see like, oh, there's a very good chance that with the th possible variations that I could have here, these squares for sure can be filled in. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to kind of get that the first time around or something like that. And honestly, like, I don't think even I would go with this sort of approach. Um, but it is good to know that they're saying what to do when you have two hints or more. Now back to the puzzle. All the squares in these lines have been found. Put an X in the leftover square. So this is a 1, so we know we're good there. We know we're good there because the 1 is good there. Um, what else do they want me to fill in? Because I think that's really it, right? Oh, right there. Just like that. You're almost there now. Go ahead and complete the puzzle. Game Stato. So here we know we have a 3, we have a 4 here, and we have a 2 there. And it's made... a blue bird. Thanks, that's all for our explanation of Lodgehard basic rules and techniques. You can review the content here at any time for the tutorial screen. Have fun playing Lodgehard. So the core mechanic of the game, right, is we're given these hints. I personally call them groupings. But we're given these set of groupings for each row and for each column. And that tells us which pixels we get to turn on in the grid. And once we complete that, we're able to see the picture that it's trying to make. Here's the main puzzle list for Lodge Art, the Grimoire. Originally, it could solve various puzzles, but the magic has yeah. gone straight to the Yeah. Gotcha, bro. So let's solve this puzzle. Uh, we'll be using the mouse. Alrighty, so I've turned off a lot of the hint system and stuff like that that they have here. Um, just because I want to have a little bit of the challenge. But now we can kind of start to see a little what the tutorial was talking about when it comes to these puzzles and stuff like that. So every time you kind of enter these like pictogram puzzles, the first thing that I personally always like to do is trying to figure out where do I start. And the easiest thing to look for is areas in which uh, the number, like the full row is there. So if you have one group or one hint and it matches the amount of columns or row squares you have, so like this whole thing, that's generally a pretty good place to start. We also know that for the grouping of 1-3 in a 5x5 five five puzzle, there's only one square in between, so we can do that as well. And so continuing on here, we can see that this guy's filled out, so that's pretty cool. And in this case, just from standing here, I can see that, oh, well, this one only has a 2, so that can be done there. This one has a 3, so we know that can be done there. Uh, that... And then once you know it, this one automatically filled itself in for the 1, 1, 1. So we have 1 off, 1 on, 1 off. So that kind of filled itself in on its own. 
Now here with being a 2-1, I can confidently at least say that because a grouping of 2 is always connected, I can at least put the 2 here. Put the square there. And then because there's only one square left over, that's the 1. And naturally, the 3 at the top gets filled in on its own. There's a lot of different ways you can approach on how to solve a puzzle. There's more complicated ways and more simple ways and stuff like that. Oh, the puzzle was wood. Yeah. You're doing great. Let's try solving one more puzzle. Uh, the hint for this one is materials found in nature, harder and more durable than wood, and used as materials for tools and weapons. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so there's a lot of different puzzles, it seems, to solve. So we're gonna have a pretty good time with this one, I find. Game Stato. So we can immediately see there's a 5 here. We see a lot of 1-3s. So that kind of takes care of those, which is quite nice. We see a 1, 2 here, and there's a square here, uh, X here, so we know there's a 1, uh, a, a on square there. This 3 is automatically done, so we can fill that guy out. Going up from here is a 3, so we can fill out these two. And then the final one, um, this is kind of interesting, because if you hadn't done this one first, you could kind of be, you could, or if you hadn't done, like, this one first, you could be hard-pressed to believe, oh, well, here's 2 at the top. I could put the three here, but in reality, this would actually be a mistake because that would imply that this one is on, but then this one would have to be on, but then we know there's a five, so that actually would not, that would mean this one has to, has to be on, so you can kind of begin to see like, oh, well, in reality, it's one of these. And I believe this is going to be like a rock. Stone! Close enough, and 60 seconds on the dot. Grimoire category release, tool. So now we have the tool page. Yeah. Fantastic! You've solved the problem, and as a result, the tool page has been restored. Yeah. Hmm, it seems that the Grimoire categorizes... Grimoire's categories are restored when you solve specific puzzles. Let's keep that in mind. And Mia leveled up! Let's go! I don't know what levels do in this game, really, but we'll see what, the, what it actually does here. Hmm. My magical yeah. power seems to have leveled up. It must be because you solved the puzzles. It appears yeah. that when you solve the puzzles, my magical power gets amplified. If I level up, my magic might become even stronger. Mm. Hmm, what could this be? I feel a strange power, different than usual. Clear 20 more puzzles to reach rank 3, got yeah. it. Well, let's go check out the restored tool page. Ah, uh, there's only one puzzle, but it can't be solved as it is. Let's see, according to the instructions at the time, solve yeah. the puzzle, use it as nourishment, and overcome the mysteries. Then new puzzles will be created. Nah. That's what it says! With my magical power level up from earlier, this mysterious power that surged forth might be us usable. Huh? Yeah. So I couldn't I restore the grimoire on my own? Well, unfortunately, I'm not good at solving puzzles. I gotta say, I really do appreciate Emil's uh, design here. It's quite, it's quite adorable. And the header, I always appreciate heterochromatic uh, characters. Wow. It's just so cool. I'll do my best too. So please help me restore the grimoire together. You got it, Emil. Yeah. Ahem. Let's try solving this puzzle. So this one is a rod-shaped handle is present. The tip is attached with a material stronger than wood. And then there's a hint that's written in a runic language that we can't actually read. But we are able to at least fuse the puzzle together. Ah. On this screen, you can use my power. By combining materials, you can perform fusion to solve the puzzle. To fuse yeah. a puzzle, you need to find the specified combination of materials. Yeah. Refer to the fusion hint in the upper left and the puzzle hint in the upper right to find the combination. This yeah. time, select stone and wood and then press the fusion button. A tool that can mine even hard surfaces. Oh. Great, the fusion is successful. This puzzle is available to solve. Yeah. From the puzzle list, solve puzzles, then perform fusion to unlock new puzzles to solve. Let's repeat these steps and aim to restore the grimoire. If you yeah. want to learn about fusion again, check out the tutorial. Uh, use it by swinging overhead. Nice. Dude. You can now solve the puzzle. Alright, let's give it a try. 
By attacking larger puzzles, we recommend viewing the following tutorial with some techniques on how to solve difficult puzzles. Do you want to view the tutorial? Sure. This is what? Oh, this is a 10 by 10 grid. Aha, I see. Let's look at some convenient features and tips on how to solve larger puzzles. First, look at the color of the hint numbers. Blue numbers means that there are squares that can be filled in order, uh, in or marked with an X. Meanwhile, white numbers are lines that won't give you any useful hints right now, and I believe I've turned that one off too, uh, for my own purposes, just to keep the challenge high. But if you're playing this and you've kind of never really played puzzles like this before, I do think this is a really good idea to turn on just to kind of help you see where you'd want to start in a puzzle like this. It's easier to start with blue numbers that are larger than half the total number of squares in a line. That I agree with. Like here. Or here. This 10 means that all 10 squares need to be filled in. Let's do that now. Funny enough, when I first like started getting into these things, I started on a 10 by 10 grid. So I'm used to solving these sorts of things quite easily. And notice- oh, that's actually really funny. Notice how these all became blue now. Finding correct squares along the edge of the puzzle has a major advantage. Look here. The bottom square is filled in, and the bottom hint is 1. So this square can't be filled in. Mark with an X. Great! For the same reasons, add an X to these squares too. Yep, there's a 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. You can ignore the 6 and the 4 for now, and there's a 1 there too. So we can at least do these, and these, and that. Good job! Next, let's look at this column. Having this square filled in makes it easier to find the rest of the six connected squares. Fill in the correct squares and add an X to the rest. Doop, 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 doop. Well done! The same goes for this line. Fill in the four connected squares and mark the rest with an X. Boop, 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 boop. That's it! Filling in squares on the edge of the puzzle makes it easier to fill in other parts. Always keep an eye on the edges. Next, we'll give you a useful tip for finding squares and lines with blue hint numbers. Line the squares up in the tightest pattern you can from both edges of the puzzle. If any squares from the same hint number overlap, then those squares can be filled in. Let's try it together. We'll use this line as an example. First, count out the pattern from the top edge using as few squares as possible. With the hint 3, 2, 1, it would look something like this. Next, count the pattern from the bottom edge using as few squares as possible. And if you start the pattern from the bottom, it should look like this. Both patterns have a square uh, from the same hint number. Right here. However, beware of this square. This square comes from a different hint numbers, from different hint numbers, so it doesn't qualify. There's a chance it shouldn't be filled in. This is a difficult point, so take your time. Yeah, so this is kind of what I was mentioning earlier, where it's like, you have different ways you could analytically kind of glean what it could be. So this 3 could be here, and this 4 could be here, that's pretty good. Or it could be this set of 3 and this set of 4. We know that, and there's an X over there, so that's a possibility as well. Or it could be this set of 3 and then this set of 4. And we at least see that these two overlap the entire time, and these three overlap the entire time from the three different permutations that we have. So there's a very good likelihood that in actuality, the ones that overlap for the three different choices that we made are probably going to be this one. Now for this middle one, two of the three do, so we do technically have a 33% chance that it might not actually be it. In the case of a 3-4, yeah, you never really know. It depends on what's going on in other rows and in other columns. Let's look at it again. If a square from the same hidden number is used when counting from both edges, and that square is definitely correct, so fill it in. You got it! Notice the hint numbers turn black? That means nothing more can be added done in this line for now. Where? Oh, these, yeah. This trick is very handy, so let's try, let's try using it one more time. Let's look at this row. First, count the pattern as tightly as possible from the left. And count out the pattern as tightly as possible from the right. It's finding a squares from the same hint number that overlap. Here they are! Fill them in! That's it! Many squares can be filled in from like this. Let's do it again. Count on the pattern as tightly as possible from the left. 
and from the right. And what we find is exactly one square will overlap. You got it! Look at the hidden number here. It still hasn't turned black. That means there's still are, there are still squares to fill on uh fill in there are there are either still squares to fill in or squares to mark with an X. Doesn't seem like there are any more squares to fill in, therefore there must be some squares we can mark with an X. Let's look at all the possible ways to fill in the squares. This way, or like this, or maybe like this. Were there any squares not used in any of the patterns? Yes, these three squares weren't used in any of the patterns. Mark these squares with an X. Good! We found all the clues on this line, so the hidden number has turned black. It's more like white to me, but close enough. Looks like we can add an X on the, to the line we worked on before. Can you find it? Yes, you can add an X to this square. Give it a try. That's it! Next is an advanced technique. Let's look at this row. This hint is blue, so there should be a square to fill in, or a square to mark with an X. But it doesn't look like we can find either with the methods covered so far. This is a tricky line. If you encounter lines like this, try the following method. Look at each square and consider what would happen if you filled it in or marked with an X. Try it out on each square on the line you, and you may find a correct square to, one, to mark or to give an X. Let's give it a try. This square is a case in point. I consider the line with this square correct. If we fill it in, then what? If this square was filled in, then the pattern 1, 2 wouldn't fit in, because you would have to then go to the right for the 2. So this can't possibly be a correct square. Let's mark it with an X. Good job! Think carefully about hard lines and consider hypothetical scenarios to find solutions. Like that, you'll be able to solve even the trickiest of hints. Let's look at this column next. There are a lot of hint numbers here, but only one pattern works when you think about it. Fill in the correct squares and add an X to the rest. Now, this one's kind of a tricky one because you wouldn't automatically see four ones and be like, oh, it's just every other square. The only reason we were able to do that is because we had the one started here and we were able to gleam that another one happened here. Or five ones, I mean. So because of this, we know that going up from here is for sure going to be an alternating pattern. You should be able to finish the puzzle using the techniques explained so far. Go ahead and finish the puzzle. Sure. You've kind of left me in an interesting position, but I guess we can go with it. Okay, well, in reality, because we have a 2 1 1 here, we can do that and do that. Um, there's a possibility that because this is a 2, uh, we could put something here. I know this is one that's already. Oh, wait, no, it's not actuality because the. I literally just filled that in. <laughs> no, we didn't do that one. Uh, well, that's actually a problem because this has to be... This has to be a two. What do you mean? What? This has to be a two. Oh no, it doesn't have to be. It can be this. I see. It doesn't have to be. I was thinking the left one could actually be the the one from there, but that might actually make sense. Uh, this is a two, that's, that's a two. Which means that's a two. And the rest can be done. Uh, this whole thing is done. Uh, pretty obvious from here, at least, from the bottom up, that this is a 5. This is a 4, so that takes care of that. I know that's good. 1, 2. 1, 1. Takes care of that. Uh, the only one it can be is here. So for a 1, 1, 2, 2, we see the 2, we see the 2. We know that for a 1, there's an X on either side, so that fills in the 1 there. Uh, same thing here. Same thing here. Uh, then same thing here.
I'm gonna do my absolute best to kind of explain silly things and like uh, uh, insights that I do during these <laughs> as best as I can. Um, we hope you can use these techniques and features to solve larger puzzles. You can review the content here at any time from the tutorial screen. Have fun playing Lodge Art. Dude. You can now solve the puzzle. All right, let's give it a try. Well, I just did. Oh, they want me to do that. It was a tutorial. JK. Alrighty, I think that's what we're calling for this episode. I'm going to try and keep these on the shorter side between 20 and 25 minutes, honestly, depending on how puzzles go. I imagine as puzzles get bigger from higher than 10 by 10 grids to like 30 by 30s or something like that, maybe videos can either get longer or I split a puzzle up into two videos or something like that. But without further ado, um, thank you all for watching this introduction episode to Lodge Art Grimoire. Um, let me know how you feel about this one and the series as a whole as time goes on, uh, because I'm quite curious to see how puzzle games do on the channel slash with people actually watching things. That doesn't mean that the reading stuff will ever go away and stuff like that. I'll still do readings and stuff like that. And if you ever want to see, hear me, the voice acting and reading uh, things, you can always check out the streams as well, or the VODs of streams where I play JRPGs. But this, I think, is going to provide a cool fresh look on Let's Plays here, at least on the channel and just kind of YouTube as a whole, I feel. But more on that in a future episode. So without further ado, thank you all for watching. We'll continue next time with some more puzzles. And it's going to be a pretty good time, so catch you then. Bye-bye.